Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Computer wasn't plugged in the right way. So executive privilege is the power of the President of the United States and other members of the executive branch who are appointed um, to the U.S. government to resist certain subpoenas, all right? So they don't have to turn over information. The reason for this is the President has to be given very open and honest information so that the people that are giving it to him don't think that it's going to come back to get them later on, right? So here's my open information. It's truthful. It's honest. Nobody else is going to know. I don't have to worry about my opinion getting out. You're the one that can make the decision. So the president can use this thing called executive privilege, but he can't use it if there's a crime involved, right? So the president can't use executive privilege if, if, he committed a crime, so we can't use executive privilege to hide what he did. This happened in U.S. v. Nixon in 1974. So the question in this case is, did Nixon have executive privilege over the attempt to, to um, violate, refuse the subpoenas in the Watergate tapes, right? The recordings of the White House. The court said no, right? No, the need for confidentiality of high-level communication without more can sustain an absolute unqualified presidential privilege. The, pre the court granted that there was a limited executive privilege in areas of military diplomatic affairs. So if it's military, it's diplomatic, you can use it. But if it's used to hide a crime, you can't do that. So what that means is when the president's getting information on how he wants to enforce the law, executive privilege. Getting information on how to get involved in the military or some other country, executive privilege. Dip diplomatic affairs, executive privilege. If he's trying to get people to do things for him to break the law, no executive privilege. Second time, you got to stop the tape now. Well, third, with the computer. I need you guys to stop the tape or the video. I need you to read the transcript about U.S. v. Nixon, read the OEA's case about U.S. v. Nixon, take the practice quiz, and then we will move on um, from there. Oh, don't forget to watch that other video for me on U.S. v. Nixon as well. All right, executive privilege. Okay, welcome back. The appointment power is big. Now, we've seen appointment power before. The appointment power is big when it comes to royalty, all right? So, the president may appoint officials on his or her own authority. So, it could be a recess appointment or it could be White House staff. Recess. Senate's in recess. He can fill somebody, be a temporary position until the Senate confirms them. White House staff, hired. That's anybody. But most important officers and are appointed by the president must be approved by the Senate. Every agency, every bureau, every administration, every cabinet position, the president appoints and the Senate approves. But if you look there, there's the picture. The most important thing the president considers when appointing somebody to one of these offices is loyalty. Here's why. Go back to the first slide. Think about that. Not literally, figuratively. Here's what I mean. The president wants the laws enforced the way that he wants the laws enforced. And he can't be the one always doing it. So he has to trust the people that are enforcing the laws for him to do that. So he'll put people in office who may not be experts on the topic, but they may, they may understand what the president wants and they'll do it the way he wants to. The reason that the head of a cabinet position doesn't have to be an expert is he has so many people working for him or so many people working for her underneath right? They'll tell them the information they need to know, right? So Rick Perry, former governor of Texas, doesn't even really understand energy. He was the head of the energy department, which was all nuclear based. He was the first person in the history of the country, head of the new and department of energy who didn't have a doctorate, all right, in nuclear physics. Yeah. President Trump was more concerned with loyalty and that's his discretion. So when you want someone to enforce the laws for you, want them to do it in a way that's going to be loyal to you and make you look good. So appointment power is big when it comes to this. Now, removal power. Removal power is what the president does when he wants to remove people who he doesn't like. Cabinet, fired. Administrations, fired. Agencies, fired. Bureaus, maybe not, right? FBI, set amount of time. Can't fire. Can ask for resignation, but can't fire, right? Same with the CIA. But for the most, they, he can fire them. The only two things he cannot fire, number one, federal judges. We've done this at nauseum because federal judges serve for life. And the other one is independent regulatory agencies. Think of the power the president would have if he could fire the heads of the FCC, how things are regulated on the radio and TV. 
um, head of the Federal Reserve Board. He could control the economy much better. So he cannot remove independent regulatory commission heads. You've read about that a little bit. You've got something on there. We're going to spend time next week doing that, all right? Um, but he cannot remove these two people. That's not his discretion. The power of recognition is going to be a foreign power. We're going to get to that a little bit more tomorrow. But that's really the ability of the president to recognize the leaders of other countries. It doesn't mean that you actually recognize the country. But that's an enforcement power, right? I recognize this country. We can negotiate with them. We'll get to that foreign power a little bit more tomorrow. We're going to spend a little bit with the military. Um, but the ability of the president to recognize another country and then have that ability to enforce or negotiate with other countries is a big deal when it comes to that. Finally, the change in view of the president. Why is the president power ground? Number one, it's in the hands of one person, right? So to go from Washington, who is very laid back, I can only veto things if it's truly unconstitutional, to Andrew Jackson. I'm Andrew Jackson. I'm going to veto it if I don't like it. That's the first part, right? So one person's got the power. It's going to get bigger because each person wants to do more than the previous person. Second, times of crisis, demand of a stronger central government and leader, the, the president usually gets more powerful. Lincoln, Civil War. FDR, World War II. George W. Bush, right? 9-11. The powers of the president go up. Now, here's the deal. As those powers go up to meet the need, great. But what never happens is those powers never return to where they were. Right, They always are a little bit bigger because they want to retain some of that power. Because remember, the president's just a faction. We're people united by common interests, don't care about the rights of others. They're all ambitious as well. So the power is going to grow. It's going to come back. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this virus. President Trump's not taking advantage of that. And the question is, will he? And then kind of expand the power of the national government over the states. Third, Congress has delegated much authority to the president concerning foreign affairs. So chief of state, commander-in-chief, trade, those things having to do with other countries, Congress has said, here, you do it. As a result, they are super hesitant to declare war. Remember, the last time we declared war was World War II. The reason for that is, when war is declared, that foreign power is picked up and dropped domestically. And all of a sudden, that president's got all that power. Think about Youngstown Sheet and Tool Company, right? Right? World War II, Roosevelt could seize everything. Why? Wars declared. Why couldn't Truman? The Korean War wasn't a war. It was an armed conflict. So that whole power of the president to take foreign affairs and, foreign affairs and drop it home didn't kick in because Korea wasn't a war. So they're hesitant to do that because it really gets the president, the power of the president really big. And then finally, the change of view of the president, why is it grown? president has more media attention, right? So as each president's ability to increase their presence um, in the media and the line has grown, their power has grown. Go all the way back to the bully pulpit and, and, and um, Roosevelt, right? He's the first guy that recognizes it. Then you have Kennedy and Nixon debating on TV. That changes it. And then our current president on Twitter, he tries to, to control the narrative with Twitter and trying to go on every day. If you notice, he's trying to give daily press conferences so he can control the narrative. Something he hasn't done before, but now he needs to. So a president that understands the media is going to become more powerful. All right. So we are done with executing the power now. You've got these two videos. I had a split because my computer had power problems. You've got the video on Nixon. You got the visit video on Youngstown Sheet and Tool Company. You got the practice quizzes. I got one more video I'm going to post for you guys tomorrow. It's going to be on foreign affairs. You guys don't really have much else to do. Um, and then your test will go up Monday. I need it done Monday. It will not be the turn in thing yet. I know I have other things to grade, but I'm going to take that and put that on fourth quarter. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have a bunch of grades, and we're going to work throughout next week in the bureaucracy. I know we have spring break, but I'd really like to spend a lot of time reviewing. Talk to me. Um, I was going to put up the judiciary during that week and then get civil liberties and civil rights done. And that would give us three weeks to spend time reviewing with all their worksheets, all of their videos, all of my stuff. And we can talk every day, get you guys ready to crush this exam. It's 45 minutes of writing. Thank goodness, right? That means if we get ready and we practice, you will crush everybody, right? And you'll make me look good. I hope you guys are being safe. I hope you guys are being smart. 
It looks like we're going on lockdown in Salt Lake County starting probably Monday, Tuesday, is what the mayor's talking about. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, let me know if you got any questions. Let me know if the Zoom times work. I'd like to start next week, and we will go from there. Daily video tonight, even though it's Friday, for the ladies who emailed me, and we will go from there. As always, Shield Dog out.